probably come as no surprise that many species of ape frequently show homosexual behavior. So for example, with female gorillas, they can form intense friendships with other females in the harem, during which they will engage in touching and grooming and lying with their friend or their partner. They will also engage in, uh, can engage fairly frequently, in uh, queer sex as well, in which the females will rub their genitals together and lie face to face, which, quite interestingly, is more intimate than when they have sex with another male. And, even more interestingly, quite often lasts longer too. Female gorillas aren't alone in doing this though. Male gorillas will often form um, bachelor groups in which multiple males live together for an extended period of time. And during this and within these groups, there are quite often a complex network of queer partnering. Um, so some males will partner up with another male and remain monogamous and, and exclusive, effectively, to their partner, but others will be a bit more free and easy. Interestingly, there can also be intense competition for those who are deemed the best partners, with the dominant males aggressively defending the male which they have chosen to, to partner up with. Um, as with the females, they will also groom each other and touch each other and will also engage in sex. And again, they will, engage, they will have sex not only back to front, but also front to front. And in a similar way with the females, it will also last longer than when they normally have heterosexual sex. When it comes to these behaviours, they are often frequently um, explained away as being either playing or fighting, um, or they will um, be termed in ways in which they talk about um, these being aggressive or dominance displays. But as is common with these behaviours, they are often um, biased by our own assumptions, with many scientific papers, even in modern times, describing this behavior as either maladaptive or um, paradoxical and abhorrent. Obviously, these terms are incredibly morally loaded. I mean, how, for example, would these behaviors be so common and persist throughout you know, hundreds, thousands of species if it was somehow maladaptive or paradoxical? Um, taking things back to sexual selection, um, and one of the assumptions within that theory, again, assumes that the genital architecture of many, if not most, animals is also driven by the opposite sex. But one primatologist called Franz de Waal, who studied bonobos, instead suggested that within the bonobo ape, which is a uh, close cousin of the chimpanzee, the genital architecture of the females was in fact driven by other females because homosexual sex was so common. He argued that the position of the clitoris was better stimulated when, when an individual was having sex with another female than with another male, suggesting that this may be the primary cause for the way that the vagina of the bonobo looks the way it does. Right, on that note, should we crack on? Okay, and now you have another choice to make. You can either follow me this way to the bird gallery, or we can go this way to go and see some queer mammals. It is entirely up to you. If you want to do both, then don't worry, because at the end of each gallery, you'll get the chance to go back and see the other one. <laughs>